Thanks for joining us on the channel today. I want to take you through a quick job that I need to do. It's one of those jobs, I guess, that you know comes up on the weekends when I've got some spare time, and that is to fit a sliding cavity door. So before I go and show you how to go about fitting the sliding cavity door, which by the way I've never done before, so I'm sort of learning as I go. I first need to paint it. Also need to fit a privacy lock to it as well. So we'll go through some of those steps as we go through the video. Thanks for tuning in. So here's the sliding cavity door. So it's, it's an internal door, as you can imagine. And you can see I've marked out the spot where the privacy latch needs to go. So, so far, I've actually painted or primed the, the underside of it. Today, what I want to do is go through, is cut out that spot for the, the privacy latch, and then put a primer over the top, so it's all sealed. Obviously, as you can imagine, you don't want to paint both sides at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to get marks from where you've got sitting on your supports. So if we come over to the bench here. So that's the little privacy latch that we want to fit onto it. And it shouldn't take too much. So basically it's 48 mil by 57 mil, I think with the measurements on it. And that's how I've had to measure that out. So the tools that I've used so far is just a simple set square and a pencil. So I've actually measured that out just by using this Get my finger there in the right spot, measure that with a set square. And I've come roughly about a metre up from the bottom of the door to make sure I get the right spot. So that's about a nice height for people to then use that latch. So what I plan on doing is actually drilling some holes in the corner, in each corner here. And I'll probably do that from both sides, so I'll try and get the right spot, make sure I try and match, meet them in the middle. Um, and then I'll use a coping saw to cut across that and I'll just use a nice fine hand saw to cut down these sides down here. We'll see how we go. So the first thing I did was drill through. So it's just a portable drill, so nothing particularly flash there. Uh, I did take a long time to drill through, so it's not like the material is very hard, by the way. So it sort of looks like maybe it was because I did take a long time. I just drilled a little bit, got rid of the dust, drilled a little bit, get rid of the dust. Um, that's so I could see where I was drilling and I wanted to make sure I got the right spot because uh, what I didn't want to do is drill, cut a hole or cut a slot and then the, the security lock didn't fit in there so I wanted to make sure I got the job done right so I did take my time in getting it done. So the tools I've used for this is just a, a drill bit and I think it might have been like a 5 mil drill bit um, and the portable drill and as you can see I just drilled a little bit got rid of the dust so that way I could still see where my lines and my drilling spots needed to be. So the next step I used was, a, was to use a handsaw. And look, this is a fine tooth handsaw. Um, I know for many years I didn't realise that there's different styles of handsaws. Um, even though my father was a carpenter, and I guess he probably did teach me over many years. Um, but I knew that he had saws that he used for fine work and ones that he used for just cutting through timber so he had his ripping saw cross cut saw um, and also his fine work saw as fine work saw that he used um, so this is the one that I use and it's a nice fine tooth saw so what it means is the teeth are closer together and, and not as set as wide so it doesn't just rip through the timber it cuts a nice neat fine line um, and look at I haven't got the best posture as I'm cutting across there for those that are worried about WHS um, like you, I wouldn't want to be cutting like that every single day, especially if I was on a job site. Um, but look, I am fairly tall, so I'm nearly six foot two, and so I do have a fairly long reach. So I was able to reach across that because I felt that if I was trying to cut um, from the other side, I probably wouldn't have had the same um, purchase on the timber and also the way I was going to stand as well. So for me, that worked for this once off job. I wouldn't recommend doing that on a regular basis though. And you'll notice that I did take a long time, which is why we're now coming back to the other side, to the other side of the slot. Now most people have had this well and truly done in this time frame if, if you knew half of what you're doing. But look, I was being very careful, trying to make sure I didn't deviate off my line, because quite often what happens with the work that I do, I get really excited and I start cutting and I 
will deviate off my line a little bit and that really makes a big mess so just wanted to take my time as I say measure twice cut once but this time I'd measured lined it up put my pencil marks in and I wanted to make sure I stayed on those pencil marks and quite often when you're doing this type of work and you're sawing through timber the dust can come over your pencil lines and you can't really see that well where you're going so I just wanted to make sure that I got rid of the dust on a regular basis it stayed really neat on my line but not just on the line that I was seeing, but also the line underneath as well. So you can see there that I'm actually then going to start cutting through on the vertical so I can get a nice clean finish up until where I drilled the hole. Um, and so by pre-drilling those holes, I didn't get the saw marks up against the, I guess on the door where I wanted to finish. So I had a nice clean corner there as well. And after, in, in the end it worked out really, really well. This is where I got the coping saw in. Um, so I was able to slot the blade of the coping saw down through the cut I'd made with the hand saw. And then I was able to then cut across on the line. Now the, the coping saw blade is actually very fine and, and it, it does move a fair bit. Um, so, but to get a better angle on it, you saw I could actually move the door across on the stand that I had. I guess that's one of the advantages of having a nice wide reasonably stable um, stand. Like, you know, normally, like I know my father, he would have used two horse stools underneath that, but look, I don't have horse stools particularly for this type of work. But I do have these little stands that I, actually I used to use them to store my kayak on, to be honest. Um, but I now use it for work like this, so a wide platform where I can put long lengths of timber on. And while not like 100% stable, so probably not as stable as you'd say your horse stools are, uh, it does do the job so you don't always need to go out and buy new equipment all the time you just sort of make do with what you have and you can see there that that's actually come together reasonably well and the slot is now there so now the time of truth i've cut the the slot for the uh privacy to actually go into but does it actually fit and look the answer was yes um, but I couldn't actually fit it until I pulled it apart. So I had to go get a screwdriver and then come back, pull it apart a little bit and then put it, to get, put it back in. So essentially that privacy latch is just held together by uh, two screws on either side and they just screw into each other and they clamp into the door front or into the door. And so it's a very simple little latch to fit and I was really happy with the way I put the other. It's a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be um, and definitely something that anyone could do with some basic tools. So there I am just fitting it in, make sure it fits the right way. And look, you can actually slot those around, so depending on which way you want your door to slide, whether left to right or right to left and that type of thing as well. So to finish the day out, I then wanted to put another coat of primer on the top side of the door. Now at the start of the video I said I'd already primed the bottom side and you know, one of the reasons I said I only want to do one side at a time is so obviously if you have wet paint on one side and you put it onto your stand it's going to leave marks. But as it is, if you look closely at that stand, it's got foam, I guess like f foam protectors, protectors over the top of the metal bars and that's what the door's sitting on. So it's sitting on essentially foam. And that would seem like a good thing, but actually it's a very, very bad thing. Because um, what ended up happening was that that black foam <laughs> stuck to the paint. Even though I had primed it and let it dry, like it had dried for like a solid week before I flipped it over, it still stuck and left marks on the door. Um, so much so that I had to redo that, like the whole, that side of the door completely had to send it right back and start from scratch. Um, the other thing I learned too with rolling a door, if you want to get a nice finish, you need to get a really nice fine roller. So um, I guess that's something I did learn from doing this because I've done a lot of rolling of paint, like painting walls and ceilings, but never had done any door work before, um, which you may find interesting. But a lot of the doors I used to have internally were textured and had patterns in them. So this is probably the first flat, smooth door that I'd done. And what I was finding is that by using my normal rollers, which I always keep very clean, it wasn't leaving a nice smooth finish. 
So I ended up doing some research, found out I had to use a, like a finer um, length of cloth or wool, whatever you want to call it, length of texture on the roller. So the smaller that length is, the smoother finish on the door you're going to get. So in the end, that's what's happened. Um, so look, unfortunately, I didn't take a video of me fitting the door. Um, look, when I took the video of cutting the slot and doing this this primer work, um, there's a big gap between then and when I actually fitted the door. So I didn't have to fit the door. That would be a couple of lessons in itself because I, I think everything that could possibly go wrong with fitting a sliding door, I did. And a lot of that came down to the prep work Actually, fitting the door itself was easy, but putting the cavity, like the pocket in, and making sure that you put the screws in the right spot and take the bolts out at the right time, all that sort of stuff, I, I, I didn't actually do. Um, so I had to then try and remove those once the walls were up, which was extremely difficult. Um, but as you can see, painting is, I think, pretty straightforward. I think the, the biggest part of any paint job, I always say, is in the prep work, but also, Make sure you do it when it's not too cold because I actually did this on a cold day and um, one of my top coats went a bit pear-shaped. But after all that, the job actually turned out pretty well. I was happy with the paint job in the end. So this is the latch that's now fitted and you can see the screws here. And that's actually just how it holds together. So there's nothing really dramatic in there. Um, so that's the little latch that it goes into. I did have to cut that out, but basically the way I did that um, Look, I didn't take a video of me actually doing this part because I forgot about that. Um, so I'm sort of catching up after the fact. So I basically just put the plate on, drew a line around the outside of it, cut it out. And so to cut it out, all I used was a wood chisel. It's about 25 mil or a one inch wide wood chisel. Um, just put it right on the line and just gently, ever so gently just cut it in and then slowly cut it out. So there's multiple slots I went across and then just chisel it out. Um, and to get the, the groove, the deeper groove, I just used a, a smaller width chisel to get that out. But to find the location for that, what I did, you can see that, I guess the, the latch poking out um, and on the door jam, before I switched the latch on, I actually poked it out and then rubbed the mark on it. So you'd actually see where that where, where the groove was um, from that latch poking out. So that's how I knew to get the right location um, and as you can see it's just being held on there by those two screws on either side and they just screw into each other and hold it in place it sort of like clamps it together and after, overall it was a very easy thing to fit that particular latch and it wasn't that hard to put the little slot on the on the door jam either for it to slot into i thought that would be a little bit trickier than it, than it was um, and look if you don't get it perfectly right silicon can hide a multitude of sins and that's it at the end. So the latch works, there's no movement in it when it locks, the door slides beautifully. So there you go, there's another job done. Look, with most things, and I guess I say this on pretty much every video, it looked a lot, it's actually probably a lot easier than it looked. Uh, look, I was fairly happy with the way it turned out, fairly happy with how easy it was in the end. Um, and look, as far as risk versus, versus reward goes, it's well worth the effort to have a go. So I think the door cost me about $30, $35. The latch, the security latch or the lock was probably something similar. I'm sort of looking over it at the moment, looking at it as I'm making this video because it's right there in front of me. Now, look, if you make a mistake, you probably, you know, you could be out of pocket maybe, that $60, $70 mark, but to get someone in to do it and fix it, whether it's a handyman or not, like handyman charge about $70 an hour. So there's a lot of work in, in putting like just time-wise, but it's not really hard work. But normally when you're paying for a handyman or a tradie to come and do it, you're paying for their time to go pick up the door, go pick up the latch, do the prep work on the paint, you know, do the, like the actual cutting in of a latch and fitting latch doesn't take much time at all. So if your door's already there in and you want to get a tradie in, then that's probably not such a big deal because um, that wouldn't take too much time for them at all. But when you get the door and you're fitting from scratch, I think the, the risk versus reward is well worth it. And as I said in, in the video, I actually did make a mistake on the paint, so I had to start from scratch but that didn't really cost me any extra because I already had the paint. So I wasn't going out and buying extra paint to fix up the mistake. Um, so in the end, it wasn't a costly job, but it was well worth it. And I'm, look, I'm really proud of the fact that I could get it done. So with anything, please have a go. Um, the worst that can happen is that you have to sand it back and, and start from scratch. 
Uh, but, but as far as cutting goes, just be careful the way you measure it. You know, I say measure twice, cut once. People have been telling me that all my life, and it's a good motto to go by. So look, if you have found this helpful, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications if you want to get these videos as soon as they come out. So thank you very much. And if you did enjoy it, please share it with your friends. And thanks for supporting the channel. And until next time, I'll see you then.